What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Mr. Joe's Baseball Show. I'm coming at you again with some more power rankings. This is after week one of Dinger City. Season eight is underway, and uh, we've learned a little bit more about uh, what the meta's looking like, what the players are playing like, and I'd love to just go over the first week, uh, give you my thoughts, and tell you where I think everyone stands at the moment. So to get it out of the way first, I'm just going to exclude going forward the players who have not played any games yet, and those players are Gil, Cokes, Huge and Nolan. The four of them have not yet been to a, a meetup. We only had the one, obviously. So I'm just going to keep them off the power rankings until they do show up. I did have Gil number two on the preseason ones, but again, if he's not here, I'm not going to rank him just yet. So we had 13 players play in week one. It was a lot of fun. So I'm going to start off with uh, number 13. I've got uh, Spencer down there. So Spencer was not able to secure a win in the first week, which is unfortunate for him. So I do kind of feel like I have to put him at the bottom below a couple of other players who uh, who did get wins that I think Spencer could potentially still be better than, but I do think he kind of struggled in the few games that he played. So going 0-3 is not a, uh, not a great start to the season. And if we look at it right here, Spencer's worst quote-unquote loss was to Billy. So Billy won 9-5. Uh, that's why I have Billy in the number 12 spot here. Billy went 1-2 and two on the week, losing a game to Dan, beating Spencer, and losing another game to another player. I forget who it was, but it was someone pretty high up. So, Billy honestly showed a lot of promise. They, they played a great game against Dan. You guys saw that on camera. If you didn't see it, definitely go check it out. I think that they are potentially going to move up even further. Uh, it's going to be a big hurdle going above, you know, like the ninny tier, as we call it. But I do think they have the potential if they keep their head on straight in the game and they uh, continue to kind of grind and get better as time goes on. In the number 11 spot, we've got Dan. Uh, Dan went 1-3 on the week, so not a great week for him. His win was over Billy. Uh, he did have a couple of tough losses, but uh, I do think that he does earn a spot ahead of Billy just because, well, he got the win over them. And also, I think Dan's just a bit of a better player. He kind of just needs to settle in, adjust a little bit. And uh, I think I, we can expect good for, things from him this season. Uh, number 10. Tell me got Tyler. Tyler, unfortunately, loved the guy, but he didn't pick up a game. I mean, I, I kind of got to drop you to the bottom of the non-ninnies if you're not going to win any games. But I have faith that he's going to kind of get out of that rut. He only played two. He went 0-2. It's not a big deal. He's just got to kind of find his footing. He is a little... Uh, occupied with life at the moment so that does kind of take a precedent over mario baseball understandably i mean not to me mario baseball is my life but <laughs> but no seriously tyler uh while i do have him ranked 10th here he does have the potential to go up and i i do think he could be but right now he's kind of sitting at that bottom part uh number nine we got tommy tommy went two and one on the week which is uh honestly really impressive he, he did a great job. He had a couple of good wins. Let me actually pull up right now who Tommy was able to take a win over. Uh, Tommy got wins over Spencer and Jason. So, you know, the win over Jason is definitely uh, an impressive one. He, he made sure he beat Spencer there. And then he did take a loss to uh, another player that I'll get to later uh, who was very good. So I have pretty good confidence in Tommy. I think in the earlier video I said that he kind of had to prove himself and that he was struggling at base Mario Baseball versus regular baseball. So I think uh, this was a good week for him. He's on the upswing as far as I can tell. Number eight, we've got Jason. Unfortunately, Jason has fallen pretty far from where I had predicted he'd be. I had him as a top five player. Uh, number eight, not a great place to be necessarily. Would probably be lower if Gil, well, definitely be lower if Gil was playing. So, you know, going one and four on the week is never great. You know, <laughs> you know, you never want to lose four games in one week. Jason lost to Andrew, Dennis, Tiebling, and Tommy. So he had uh, pretty much losses to people exclusively higher than him, other than Tommy, who's right next to him. But I do think Jason still gets the edge over Tommy only because he had a higher seed going into this. I have, I, I don't. I haven't lost all faith in him. I'm not just going to basically reflect the rankings. I'm going to, or the standings rather. I'm going to, I'm going to say who I still think has time to pull it out. While we did see a big weakness from Jason here, I think uh, maybe he's not comfortable with our new draft. Maybe uh, he was just off his game. I did have to drop him down because other players perform better, but I do think he has the potential to kind of crawl back up. Number seven, we have Lionel. 
Uh, Lionel, I had ranked 8 previously, although it was at a 16, but I had him ranked 8, and I do think that he only has potential to move up. I mean, the guy's a great player. He went 3-3 three and three on the week, which is, you know, never great, never bad necessarily. You know, you stay at 500. So Lionel's losses came at the hands of Teebling, uh, Nick, and Andrew. So all good players. And then his wins came over myself in a, uh, a real nail-biter extra innings game. Uh, and then he took one over Maddie, which is also pretty much a nail-biter. And he took one over Nick. So obviously Lionel had a lot of great wins. His losses being to players that I have ranked higher than him. That's why uh, I think our next player is kind of going to get the edge in this rankings at least. But I do think Lionel still has that potential to climb. I think he's still... Uh, you know, he's still adjusting a bit to the new meta, which is expected. You know, you're never expected to kind of clamp right onto it. But I, I do think he needs a little bit of time. He's a great, excellent player. So he'll he'll make his way. I could still see him being a top three contender for sure. After Lionel, we've got Nick. Nick also went three and three. He did, however, pick up the win over Lionel. So that's always, you know, an ever so important decider when you get to kind of like higher ups and you want to see their head to heads and things like that i think nick really needed that win that was a big win over lionel uh the first game of the season that i played against him or it was his second game of the season rather i kind of crushed him it was pretty pretty brutal it was an off-camera game 17 2 but then he comes back and he beats lionel he takes a game over tyler good win and he drops one to dennis so you know it's not like the end of the world by any means for Nick losing to those players. Plus that win over Lionel is huge. And I, I think that gives him some good stock going into the next week. I think Nick and Lionel are currently the two closest ranked players in this top section, but that could change at any moment. We, we got a lot of baseball to play. There's only week one. Who's, who's to say where it's going to go from here. We got to, we got to see a lot of things that happen. Uh, next up at number five, we've got Maddie. Uh, Maddie went 2-2 two two on the week, taking losses to Lionel and Andrew, and wins over Dan and Teebling. So he's got a really strong win there, two losses to uh, great players. So Maddie's the kind of player where he always has like a rocky start to the season, but once he settles in, he is a very strong, consistent player. He needs to do a little adjusting to the meta, in my opinion. I do think he's kind of got a dated sense of the game, and he might rely a little bit too much on what he's previously known, but that doesn't mean he's not a great player. You know, he's still very, very good at this game. And I think he's going to hold on to this top five spot for a majority of the season. As long as he can settle down, get comfortable with the new meta, and just, you know, you know, kind of keep playing baseball the way he plays baseball, or as, as well as he does, at least. Now we're into our top four. So, coming in at number four, we have a newcomer to the club, but uh, a familiar face to people who are involved in the netplay community. It is T-Bling, Tom, whichever one, I'll probably refer to him as both. He went 4-2 and two on the week, which is obviously an excellent performance. So he had wins over Tommy, Lionel, uh, and Jason, which were very, you know, those, those are pretty solid wins to get in, especially for your first appearance. You know, you come into the club and you're taking names off very strong players. I think he really made a statement out of this week, and it really goes to show that I, I think he is going to uh, kind of cement himself in the top of the club at some point, whether it's top five, if it's top four, if it's top three, who's to say? But uh, as far as I can tell, his potential is absolutely there. Tom's going to put on a great performance for us this season. Now, in the number three spot, we have a player who uh, I really think is putting on an excellent performance this season so far after that first week, playing seven games, only losing one. We have Andrew. Andrew put on an absolute show. He crushed everybody that came into his path, you know. So, his wins were Nick, Maddie, Jason, Lionel, Tiebling, and... Uh, someone else that's a little lower down billy so when you're taking games off of basically exclusively top players you only drop one he dropped a game to me and it was a real nail biter uh i mean you're you're really putting on a show for the first week of the season and if he can keep up this pace he is guaranteed a top three seed um if he keeps playing the way he was playing he's playing absolutely on top of his game it, he felt nearly unstoppable i was lucky enough to kind of take the game off of him and i was playing very very well we both kind of uh, sat down next to each other and we were like uh yeah i heard you're playing really well tonight and i was like oh yeah yeah i am and i said the same thing to him and he's like yeah i'm like five and one or i'm five and oh or six and oh or something 
so yeah, we we had a real clash there. I did end up taking it, but Andrew, an absolutely incredible performance, and I think uh, if he can keep this up, which I think he can, I think he's a top three seed easily. And now in your number two spot, you got me, Mr. Joe. Uh, I went three and one on the week. I, I had a win over Andrew and a real nail biter. I had a loss to Lionel in a extra innings game, so another nail biter. A definitive victory over Nick. I uh, absolutely crushed him in that one. I think it was a five inning mercy. And then my biggest win of the week was over Dennis, uh, your number one rank in my opinion. Uh, so I did uh, take a game off of Dennis. It was a game where we played with story mode teams. So I had the Ma the Wario Magic Koopa team, and he had the Bowser Bro Dry Bones team. So we had a great time playing that one. That one was on uh, on Dinger City's channel. So definitely check that out. That 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 game was a ton of fun to play. So I did have the win over Andrew. I had the win over Dennis. So I really think that that cements me in this number two spot. And it's honestly mine to lose at the moment. Maybe once Gil comes in, he'll try to kind of knock me off of there. But I do think right now I have it pretty solidly. Andrew's someone to worry about, but I think that I have the upper hand on him personally. So I'm not too worried about that just yet. But now let's talk about our number one ranked player, in my opinion. And I think most people's opinions. It's Dennis. I mean, he did drop a game. He only went 2-1 and one on the week, but it's still Dennis. He, he is the kind of guy, he's going to play three games a week. He's probably not going to lose any of them. He, he loses a random one. You got 2-1 and one, one week, but if you do that for 10 weeks, you know, you're winning 20 games and losing maybe four. So he's the kind of guy where he is the epitome of consistency. He's hard to uh, get in his head. Like, it's hard to... Uh, figure out his pitching and also figuring out how to pitch to him you never know when he has a read on you you never know when you have the mix up or if he's just conditioning you it's honestly he's such a tough player to play against and i don't see him dropping this number one rank anytime soon he is an excellent player he is my personal choice for making the world series on one side so i, I don't think there's much getting in his way this season but we will see it, you know the it's, it's his to lose in my opinion but I don't see him losing that personally, but we'll have to see, you know, going into week two, where actually I'm recording this about 15 minutes before I'm going to leave to go play our games for week two. So we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the power ranking videos, let me know, drop a comment down below, drop a like, even if you didn't like the video, I'd still like you to like it and subscribe. If you haven't already, it's going to help me out. I'd really love to keep making these videos uh, whenever I have time. So if you enjoyed it, I enjoyed that very much and I will see you next time. I've been Mr. Joe. This has been my baseball show. See you later.